Thank you. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. Big show for you tonight, folks. Oh, you know, when I want something quick and easy, it's pasta. Oh, yeah, when I want something rich and comforting, it's pasta. It always hits the spot. Speaking about hitting the spot, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. That's right, folks. It's the perfect pasta tonight right here on Emerald Live. Ever uh, go in the grocery store and wonder all the different shapes and flavors or colors of pasta that there is out there? It's unbelievable. And what pasta goes with what sauces? Some are bigger, some are longer, some are skinny, some are tube shaped. Let me tell you what's on the menu tonight for our perfect pasta. A few of my pasta favorites tonight we're going to do. One is going to be sort of a little New Orleans flair with a little Italian flair, a little anti-pasta pasta salad. We're going to have a little salami and cheese in there with this pasta. Yummy. And then you've heard of veal parmesan. Have you heard of shrimp parmesan? Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to have a little shrimp parmesan tonight, ladies. And then a classic veal piccata with angel hair pasta. And then, last but not least, where did this dish go? Tuna tetrazzini. Oh, I love that. That's what we're going to do for the perfect pasta here. Here's what we're going to start our first dish. Uh, I've got some roti. That would be the spiral type pasta. And um, in our pasta pot, I want to lightly salt the water. A little oil in the water. Oh, baby. Paid the bills. Stove's working. And we're going to put the pasta in here and begin to start cooking that so that it's al dente. Now, as I said earlier, for this anti-pasta pasta salad, what are we going to put in there? One of the biggest things for this particular salad is the dressing. Just to sort of cling like the sauce, to cling right on the noodle or the roti as we got there. So here's what we're going to start. We're going to add a pinch of salt. We're going to add some garlic. We're going to add some... Oh, thank you. We're going to add some, some Italian herbs and a little crushed red pepper. And then I have a little balsamic vinegar. Now, that's cheap. It was on sale. Figured, what the heck? Balsamic vinegar. The reason uh, why uh, balsamic is the color that it is is because of uh, it being aged in the, uh, in the oak barrels. And uh, that's what they do in Italy. They like, make the vinegar and age it in uh, large oak barrels, and then they'll extract it out and put it in smaller oak barrels, and it intensifies in flavor and in color and so forth, and they put it in smaller barrels, and they're very serious about it. Now, for this particular dressing, about three to one. Three oil to one vinegar. So, you want to drizzle this now slowly. Now, if I added an egg to this, this would be an emulsion, right? Or like a mayonnaise. No egg, vinaigrette. That's what this is now, a vinaigrette. So I'm going to drizzle in this olive oil to the balsamic vinegar. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs! <laughs>
Welcome back. Perfect pasta tonight. So we've got the roti pasta in here now, cooking away, getting all happy. We're going to check on that. This is when you want to uh, see if how al dente you want your pasta. I don't like it too uh, too cooked. It's just kind of like, you know, just it's got to have a little a little something something to it. A little something, a little something. So this is literally about 30 minutes away. It still has a little bite to it. So now I'm just going to turn the heat off and let it in there. Provolone cheese. Little small dice of provolone. Love that. Prosciutto parma. I know, come on. Right? Pasta, provolone, and prosciutto. The three Ps. And then I have some salami. Yeah, that Genoa stuff, the small one. Mmm. Little sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, yeah, babe. Big budget, ladies. Big. Now, here's what we're going to do. I uh, added the olive oil to the Italian seasoning or Italian essence, crushed pepper, garlic, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper. I think what we'll do now is we'll add a little fresh basil in here. Oh, yeah. So we're just going to uh, take some fresh basil. Oh, wish you could smell us. <laughs> so now we have the fresh basil. We're going to add that to the dressing. And then I chopped a little bit of fresh parsley. Mm. <laughs> now look, this is what you want to do. You want to kind of, oh, see, you can't see this at home. You can't smell it. You can't see it. It's getting all happy in here now. All right, now here's the thing that we're going to do. We're going to go get our pasta. And this is where you're making either a salad, a pasta salad, or you got a marinara sauce you've been cooking all day, or fettuccine alfredo sauce you got on. You don't drain the pasta right. That's why you need one of these. See, let it all rinse out. Generally, you know who you are. <laughs> you take the pasta out of the stove, put it in a colander, and that poor sauce that you've been simmering for eight hours is now waterlogged. <laughs> Done. So drain it good. And then you should really let this cool, which it is now. <laughs> well, that's because we're really cooking here. So now in the pasta goes in the vinaigrette. Easy. All right. So, now we'll use a little spoon. Let's get the pasta happy. Oh. 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 You see, it's, it's just gone. It's thirsty. And it's happy now. Now, we'll add all the meats and the tomatoes in here. And then we'll add the cheese. See, and then we'll fold this over. All the cold cuts of love. The three peas. Then you should really let this just get nice and cold. Or maybe you can't wait like I am right now. And you just put it in a bowl like this. And I like to finish it. Mm. Just a little bit of essence. And a little bam. And then you can never have 
You can never have enough Parmesan Reggiano cheese. Oh, yes. You just can never have enough of that cheese. And then you can just get some herbs like that. And there you have it, a little pasta salad, all right? Wow. I've got to show you this dish. We're on to something here. Because you've had chicken parmesan, you've had veal parmesan or parmigiana, but why not shrimp parmigiana? So I have these beautiful sweet shrimp that were available today at the old fishmonger, and we cleaned them up. These are about maybe a 16, 21 size. That would be 16 to 21, somewhere in the middle there makes a pound. That's how shrimp are. We uh, deveined them, and um, here's what we're going to do. First thing, we have some linguine. Going to cook a little bit differently, especially if the pasta is dry than fresh. It's going to cook longer being dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some of that in here. And we're going to get the linguine in here. Then while that's cooking, we're going to quickly bread. You can certainly do this ahead of time. We're going to take flour. We're going to take eggs with some water. This here is going to make an egg wash. It's on high speed right now. <laughs> so now we're going to take the flour, the egg wash, and then I have the breadcrumbs. Look at the flour. It's not happy. Why? It's not seasoned. So we're going to season that. Oh, yes. All right. Now it's happy. See? Look. Smiling. Egg wash. Fine. Bam. Breadcrumbs, they're not happy. Why? Not seasoned. Matter of fact, let's add some cheese. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Waking up, hey, honey, good morning. Here, have some cheese. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. Parmigiana. Yes, sir. You ever had that? Not yet. Well, you see, see, you can't smell that over there right yet. But uh, what we're doing, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh. Just joining us, we've taken the 1621 shrimps, peeled, deveined. We added them in some seasoned flour. From there, they went into some egg wash, traditional breading, and then into some cheesy breadcrumbs, seasoned. Boom, 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 and then we've just kind of had them in here like this, and we're just kind of draining them now on a little rack to just get that excess breadcrumb off. It'll save your oil. I'm using just vegetable oil. You could use canola oil. Okay, the shrimps are done. Now, oh. Oh, we want to drain them real good? Huh? Oh. You remember what I tell you? Anytime you fry in anything, whether it's a shrimp or shrimps, or shrimps, potatoes, you want to season it as soon as it comes out. That's when they're vulnerable. So now I'm going to use just a little essence and season them up. Then, we're going to come over here now, grab a few handfuls of these. Oh. 
Now, the thing that people make a mistake frying, they overdo it. They try to get too many at one time, and then, especially if they're doing this on the stovetop, you see how the oil expands like that? Right about now, you're calling 911. <laughs> so you want to be sure that you have the oil, maybe 50% of the frying vessel or the pot that you're in, okay? All right, let me show you what we're going to do. How's the pasta? Yeah, it's all right? Very good. Thinking about doing this for a living. <laughs> you should. Pretty good right now, you know. It's all seemed to be sailing. All right, we made this little marinara sauce, okay? Crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, garlic, Italian uh, herbs. Did I say garlic? Did I? I did say garlic, didn't I? Yes. Oh. So now we're going to check the pasta. Just <laughs> oh, it's, I can tell it's just perfect. So now, you remember when we? Oh yeah, it used to stick. That was the old studio, though. right? <laughs> yeah. So watch this, Doc. You're going to take the noodles out and drain them really, really good, and drain them really good. And then we're going to kind of go over here with the noodles. You see? Okay, uh -huh. And if any of them don't want to come, we're leaving them behind. <laughs> so that's it. You lost out. <laughs> then, we don't want the pasta to stick. So now this is when you get a little oil, a little olive oil. Mm, 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 mm. Then you get a little salt like... Mm, 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 mm. Toss it up. Then... See, it's not going to stick. Oh. Then, we'll go with a little bit of marinara sauce like this. Shh. They'll all be doing it. <laughs> then, some of the shrimps. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Then. And then, more of the shrimps. And then, we take some of the sauce like this. This side, that side. Oh, don't forget me, please. And then, we take some cheese. Mozzarella cheese. Yes. Yes. And then, you know that thing that you don't really use anymore? That thing called broil? <laughs> well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it in broil, and when we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around! I remember Lagasse, we were doing a little perfect pasta tonight. Y'all having a good time so far, folks? Yeah! Right. All right. Before I get into this uh, next dish to show you, the classic veal piccata. Mmm. Oh, yes. Listen, when you uh, are operating on that broil mode, it goes fast. Because it's probably... In most ovens, at least 500 degrees. You're getting that direct radiant heat from the top. So you want to be very careful. And you don't want to be sure to burn things either. So this was basically in just about at the commercial break. Okay? Oh, yeah, babe. This is like a real-time cooking show here, you know. <laughs> so the ideal situation... The ideal situation would be 
You could just serve this now family style in this sort of oven to table thing, or you could get really daring. Of course, we're never really daring here on Emerald Live. We are very conservative here, as you all know. So, I'm just going to take a little spatula to go around like this, Doc, without hurting any of the shrimps. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to go with my platter over here, Doc. And then uh, what I'm going to do is now just sort of slide things down a little bit, oh, Doc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, just yeah. Just slide things down a little bit here. Oh, yeah. And then we'll just kind of fix a couple of things while we're oh, all friends here. A few shrimp over here. Oh, and a little bit of shrimp over here. And then for me, a little essence. Mm, bam! Yeah. And then a little bit of chives like that. And then for me at least. I got to have a little bit more Parmesan cheese on mine. Oh, yeah. So we'll just take a little bit more Parmesan cheese. Oh, yeah. Uh, ha, 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 oh, ha, yeah. Ha, ha. And there you have it, a little shrimp Parmigiana. Oh, yeah. Veal Piccata. Such a lovely name. Anyhow, if you go to the uh, grocery store, the butcher, hopefully you have a butcher now, and you'll buy uh, what's called veal scallopini or veal cutlets. Um, if you don't have a jacotter, you know what that is, a jacotter? That's uh, what you use to tenderize meat. Um, pounding it works to a certain degree depending on the cut of meat. Let me see if we have. Santos? Yeah. Do you have a jacotter back there by any chance? Coming. Thank you, Santos. Thanks, Santos Pat. would be the chef of Emma Live, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, let me show you in a second. But what you want to do is you want to get your meat mallet, and there's very types of, of that. Here you go, buddy. Oh, thank you, Santos. I appreciate that. Thanks, Thanks Santos. Buddy. So... I've been using one of these things for 25-ish uh, years, give or take. And, you know, in the big places where they fabricate meat, they have machines to do this. But at home, you buy an inexpensive cut of meat, and you want to make sure it's tenderizing. Or those of you that are hunters with venison, see, watch, the little needles come out there. This is not a, you know, a, a toy that you want to play with the children. And what it does is as you apply pressure down, that's exactly what it does is it tenderizes. Watch. You see that? It's so happy right now. <laughs> so that's a jacotta. Excellent. Not very expensive. Especially like I like to, uh, some of you may make brujol. Yeah. Excellent machine for brujol. Anyhow. So. Getting back to the cutlets, what we want to do is we want to, in plastic wrap, hmm. we're going to just kind of cover them like this, and with our meat mallet, we're going to just pound them out. Because the dish after this is very simple, folks. You're going to season it. You're going to dredge it in flour. Season that side. Hate one-sided seasoned food. You know, it's just... So you can do this now. You're ready to go. Like anything, you want to make sure that everything is ready to go to cook. Better known as the terminology of mise en place. So, what do I mean by that? Okay, I got my veal ready. It's a very simple sauce. I have some stock. I'm using a little beef stock. I prefer veal stock, but I don't know. I don't know about you. I haven't been able to find that out there in the supermarket. Have you? They've hidden all the veals. 
I'm not going there. Anyhow, then I have a little butter. I've got capers, which makes this a classic with white wine and lemon. And uh, for me, a little garlic always uh, makes the dish complete. Maybe a little parsley, too. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All right, here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is start with the butter. Oh, pan's too hot. When that happens, quickly get some olive oil, and you'll raise the heating point instantly. I purposely done that, ma'am. <laughs> Now, about medium-high heat, we begin to start browning on each side the cutlets. I'm going to do that, and after the break, I'll show you exactly how to put veal piccata together. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here, the perfect pasta tonight. And we got one of the classics working. Now I brown the veal on both sides. You'll see that some of the flour here stuck a little bit. Don't worry about that. Yum yums, that's what I call them. You just kind of scrape them down a little bit. And then I'll tell you now what we're gonna do. I added the angel hair pasta in there. Now what we're gonna do is add the capers. And the garlic. Oh, yeah, babe. You know, in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, if I had shallot, I'm going to use chives instead. Deglaze with white wine. Okay, deglaze with white wine. Then we're going to add some fresh parsley in here. The juice of a lemon. Oh, yeah, babe. So now, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to start reducing this down a little bit. And as I said, we're going to add a little bit of the veal stock, preferably, or the beef stock. So we're going to add just a little bit of that. Now we're going to start letting this cook down. When this starts cooking down a little bit, the veal is cooked now. And then we're going to just add the veal in there right at the end to absorb some of the flavor and finish the dish. It's going to be done. How's the shrimp? It's all right? Very good. Now, let's go over here while we're waiting for the sauce to reduce. And uh, that chicken or tuna or whatever, tre tetrazzini. Tetrazzini has been out of the house for a long time. It's missing. So... What we're going to do is we're going to bring it back. We're going to start with a little oil. We're going to start with a little butter. And then we're going to start with some onion and bell pepper. Now, we've got to season the onion and bell pepper. A little salt. Fresh ground pepper. Then we're going to let this begin to start cooking here. Four or five minutes. Once it's under control, we'll come back. All right, this is looking really good. So now what I'm going to do is finish it. In goes the veal, the scallopini of veal. And then... We're going to finish it with just a tiny bit of butter. <laughs> so we're going to take a tiny bit of butter. Finish it. While that's happening, 
We're going to go for our wonderful angel hair pasta. Let this drain real good. Still nice and al dente. See, it makes it a lot easier when you have one of these things. Drain it real good. On the platter, it's going to go. If you're not coming, you're going behind. <laughs> now, as I did earlier, folks, we don't want the pasta to stick, right? right. It needs a little help. So if you don't want to add oil, you can add a little butter, but it needs a little help. <laughs> so that's what I do. I just give it a little help, a little salt. And then we just sort of mix it up. Oh, look. Nice and happy now. And then we just go back for the veal. And we go back for the veal. And the veal. And this is my portion. And then you just kind of go back for the sauce right over the pasta like this, you see? And a little parsley. And a little parsley, and there you have it, a little classic veal piccata. All right. Now to the bell peppers, I'm going to add some thyme and some garlic. And then I'm going to begin to add some flour to make a roux. While that's happening, we're going to add the mushrooms whatever kind you like. Then, once this cooks a few minutes, we can then add the egg noodles. Egg noodles take no time at all. They're thin, and they just cook pretty quickly. So in the egg noodles go. While that's getting happy in there, to the roux and the mushrooms, we begin to make the sauce. And to that sauce, we're going to have a little bit of milk or cream, some white wine. Oh, yeah, babe. A little salt. Mm, 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 mm. A little more pepper. When we come back, let me show you what Tetrazzini's going to be. Stick around. Doc <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Emma Lugasi here. Perfect pasta night tonight. All right, so if you're just joining us, shame on you. <laughs> We're bringing Tetrazzini back in the house. And I, again, as I said, you could do this with chicken. You could do this with turkey. I, uh, I've got some delicious white tuna that I'm going to do this with. And um, basically, uh, we had bell pepper and onions, a little butter and oil. Then we seasoned it with salt and pepper. And then we added some flour to make a roux, mushrooms. We added milk and uh, or cream. And um, once it comes up to a boil, you know how thick it is. You can use a little bit of stock to sort of thin it, if you will. Okay? Or a little bit more milk. I like the richness of the stock. The egg noodles. I told you they go fairly quick. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a read on these guys here. Oh, yeah, babe. So now we're ready to do this. Again, we're going to uh, drain this real good. And once we get all the liquid out of here, 
Then we're going to take the egg noodles now, and we're going to go inside of the mixture, okay? Now, we're going to mix this in. Then we're going to take that delicious white tuna meat. Now, the biggest thing that I remember when I was a kid, when I would eat this at people's house or whatever, it was so dry. <laughs> That's all I can remember. <laughs> like, it just kind of... Like, every now and then I think about that. I walk around like... <laughs> like, there was something in there, like a couple of pieces of sheetrock or something, you know? <laughs> so... I like mine a little looser, as you can see. And then what you want to do, we'll finish it with a little bit of parsley. Taste it. I mean, taste it. If you want to use your family as guinea pigs, go ahead. Mine are over that. Oh. Salt. Please. Pepper, yes! Yeah. All right. So season it. Taste it. Don't use your family as guinea pigs. Now, in a buttered casserole, we're going to turn this baby off. You could serve it just like this right now. What I like to do is sort of bring it up another notch. And I uh, put it in the casserole like this. This is a great leftover thing, too, if you do it this way. Because if you got too much in this pot right here, no big deal. You can serve it later. Make another dish out of it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Before I finish this, I want to uh, show you it's late at night, and you come home. And there's like, what do I eat? I don't want to wake anybody up. So I just take a little bit of angel hair like this, put it inside of the pot. See? Didn't wake anybody up yet. <laughs> you know, it's one of those nights. Then, back to the tetrazzini. Whoa. All right, so we got enough in here. It's not dry. What I like to do, I like to take potato chips. But that's just me. I like the salty thing. It just kind of break them up like that. See, you just kind of get a handful, you know. Just... All right. <laughs> yeah, I like those kind, too. Oh, yeah. You know, if you don't have... If you don't have this kind, right. right, I keep them in the freezer. See, these are good, but, but you can see. Okay, anyhow, so now <laughs> this goes into the oven for about 15 minutes. And look at this. Oh, would you mind closing the oven, you? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> See, and you spoon some of that in there with the potato chips. Oh, there you have it. Tuna tetrazzini, okay, folks? Ooh. All right. So it's late at night. It's late at night. Here's what I go. I just get a little olive oil. I'm real quiet. See? I take garlic. Oh! I take crushed pepper. Because I want it hot. <laughs> and the garlic is just getting happy. And happy. I don't care about the water. <laughs> I'm doing anything for sound now for amusement. And then I toss it. And then I season it. And if you're not coming, you're not coming. 
There's nobody home anyhow. And a little bit of parsley and some more olive oil. And then some cheese. And then I turn on the TV and I'm ready to watch the news. Hey, I want to thank y'all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you next time.